Hello, I'm Noah Ingwersen, an application engineer at ANSYS. Today we'll be talking about performing a satellite thermal analysis using STK, SPIOS, and Mechanical. I'm joined today by my colleague Felipe. Hello, I am Felipe Mercado. I am Senior Application Engineer at the Optics and Photonics Division, and I have a special focus on optics multiphysics workflows. So let's talk about the problem we're describing today. Let's say we have a satellite in orbit here. I'll draw. And we'll say it's orbiting the Earth, which I'll mark as E. Now we want to understand um, the thermal impact on the satellite as it orbits the Earth. And we have the source of thermal radiation coming from a few different locations. First, we have our sun up here. The rays from the sun will directly impact our satellite, causing it to heat up. The second impact is from the Earth's albedo. So some of these, Earth, some of these rays from the sun will actually bounce off the Earth and also impact our satellite. Uh, the third primary source of radiation comes directly from uh, the Earth's natural IR energy. So these three sources, as our satellite orbits, um, will all cause it to heat up. Luckily, in STK, we're able to model this mission environment very easily. As the satellite orbits around the Earth and its position and geometry changes, we'll easily be able to calculate um, the angles between these sources as they impact the satellite, as well as the total values from them. Then we'll pass that information to SPIOS, which will do the actual ray tracing and use our system's optical properties to determine the final radiation. Uh, this will be passed to Mechanical, which will determine the final thermal load on our satellite. Thank you, Noah. The way the energy will interact with our object of study will depend on the optical properties of the materials. We can differentiate four main kinds of behavior. First, we have transmittance, which is the fraction of incident energy that propagates through an object. This property just applies to translucent materials. Then, we have reflectance, which we can understand as a change of direction on the incident energy when interacting with a surface. Then, we have absorption which refers to the amount of energy that is assimilated by the system and then transformed to thermal energy. Finally, we have emittance, which is the amount of energy radiated by a body due to its temperature. There are other optical effects such as scattering and internal reflection that are not covered on this presentation, but are taken into account by our observers. Based on the previous concepts, we can conclude that just the absorbed portion of the total incident energy is the one that will cause our system to heat up. The behavior of the incident energy varies through the electromagnetic spectrum. For example, a material can be uh, very absorptive on the UV spectrum, but it can have a very low absorption on the infrared side, and vice versa. Same happens with the angle of incident of this energy. Light itself also has a spectral dependency. Therefore, accounting for the spectral variation on the energy sources, as well as on the objects of study materials, is a key factor to achieve accuracy. Here we have a practical example. On the left, we can see our simulation setup. We have five material samples exposed to the same sun radiation. On the right, we can see the results from the simulations. We have asphalt, galvanized steel, rock basalt, grass, and snow. On the first row, we can verify that all of them were exposed to the exact same amount of radiation. On the second and third row, we can see the reflective and absorbed energy respectively. We can see that the behavior is quite different from material to material. That's why it's important to account for the dependencies when analyzing these kind of systems. During this session, we are going to demonstrate how ANSYS tools can provide a pervasive solution for these kind of applications. 
everything starts in SDK, where we design and set up our satellite orbit. Solar, Earth, and albedo fluxes will be calculated through the full orbit and then exported on a report. SPELS will process that generated report and model the respective sources. User need to assign optical properties to the assembly and set up the simulation constraints. Finally, we will import the absorption energy results from SPELS into ANSYS Mechanical and we will simulate the thermal performance of the system throughout the whole orbit. So in today's analysis, we'll be using SDK to form our mission environment. Um, we're able to bring in our complicated systems and analyze them in the mission environment. In today's example, we're creating our own notional satellite orbit. However, it's important to note you can also bring in existing satellites um, we'll use SDK as our mission environment, incorporate those environmental effects such as the solar flux, Earth's albedo, and natural infrared radiation that I spoke about earlier. And we're able to analyze that changing geometry over time to understand how those different flux sources impact our satellite. SPELS is a non-sequential ray tracing tool that allows us to simulate the light interaction in our scenario. SPELS can model natural and artificial light sources from the UV to the far infrared spectrum. With SPELS, you can be confident of the results since we use real optical properties for the materials in our scene. We have a wide public library that can be accessed by all our customers, but we also provide a set of tools to help you model your own material files. Another big advantage of SPELS is the capability to integrate radiation directly over the 3D geometries. This is the load of the mapping energy into ANSYS Mechanical for thermal analysis. So for our particular satellite orbit we're looking at today, um, it's a highly inclined orbit with an inclination of 98.3 degrees. Um, it's a low Earth satellite orbiting at 700 kilometers. Um, which gives it an average orbital period of about 98 minutes. The calculations we're doing today to determine those flux values from our various energy sources are not natively built into SDK. However, they're very easy to compute and create. So for example, you can see the equations listed here. Many of these values are able to be computed in SDK using the analysis workbench capability. We'll combine the various components of these calculations to create our scalar values for each energy source. Um, these are dynamically updated throughout the satellite's orbit, uh, depending on the location of the satellite and the energy sources. For example, we can see this in our satellite's orbit in these screenshots here. Um, on the left is just a single moment in time where we can see the values of the fluxes impacting the satellite, as well as the direction they come from. On the right, we have an actual graph of these satellite fluxes. You can see how they periodically vary throughout the orbit. For example, the, the red line on the graph there indicating the solar flux um, peaks whenever the satellite is directly in view of the sun and quickly transitions to zero as the satellite orbits behind the shadow of the Earth. You can see similar patterns for the other two values. However, since these are dependent on the angle between um, the satellite and their respective sources, you can see how these change more incrementally. As I spoke about earlier, we can also find the exact direction angles from these flux sources. This screenshot shows just the direction angles um, from the sun vector in the satellite body frame. However, we do the same exact process for also the albedo and Earth's natural infrared radiation. On the right, you can see a graph of these angles over time. Um, again, with this, this inclined orbit um, that goes over the poles, we can see how this varies periodically. So this is the information we need to pass to SPIOS in order to do that ray tracing and determine um, the actual irradiance impacting the satellite. 
we can, of course, do this very easily from SDK by generating reports um, at a given time step um, where we can pass this data over to Spios through. So you can see an example of this report that I've generated here with the solar values we needed for both the solar flux, albedo, and infrared flux, um, as well as farther on in the graph that's cut off the direction angles they come from. You can see a few examples of these values in the table showing that the values calculated by SDK indeed match what's expected in the real world. So here's a short video of this setup in SDK. So we can see as the satellite orbits, the various um, directions of these fluxes change. You can even see if we incorporate custom satellite attitudes, such as pointing at a target, um, that that will be reflected in the direction angles of these sources. So now I'll pass it over to Felipe to talk about the setup in SPIOS. This is how the overall spell setup looks like. After processing the SDK report, spells will automatically model all the incident sources accounting for the spectral variation. User will need to assign optical properties to each one of the components on the assembly and define a 3D irradiance sensor on the regions of interest for the thermal analysis. There is a dedicated tool that allows to easily process the SDK reports into spells. It's part of the Optics Multiphysics add-in, which is available on the ANSYS App Store. Here, you can resample the orbit, link the spell simulation, and define the run mode. It can be either local or uh, sent to an HPC server. With this tool, you will also generate the files required for the thermal analysis. By using a ray tracing tool such as Spells, for this kind of analysis, you are able to account for the shadow effects produced by the geometry and radiation incident angle, as well as for the energy that is reflected between the surfaces of our objects of study. A big advantage of Spells is the capability to integrate energy directly over the 3D geometry and isolate the absorbed energy. Once the spell simulation is complete, we can send the results to ANSYS Mechanical. This integration happens through the ANSYS Workbench, but Optics Lang or Model Center can be also used. We will import the spell results as external data. Mapping the nodal absorbed radiation as a heat flux in watts per square meter. If you want to go further and analyze the structural impact of the model, you can directly interconnect the thermal solution to a structural analysis and simulate the formations induced by the thermal and mechanical loads together. As of 2021 R2 product release, you can send back to spells your deformed systems in case you want to evaluate the performance under these conditions. This is very helpful to evaluate optical systems. Here we can see the results from the thermal analysis. Here you can notice that the hot area of the satellite sweeps around the geometry depending on the incident angle of the sun radiation. If your system temperature is too high, the engineer can make changes to the satellite orbit design or uh, physical system design, also the optical properties, and run this analysis parametrically. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any more questions or want additional info, please head over to ANSYS.com.